Okay, now let's make a split screen, and we're going to use these four clips to create a four square. We're going to see all four clips at once. Okay, let me show you what we have here. Okay, so we have Todd and Judy, me, looking at, at Moose. There you have Missy and uh, Terry Ownby setting their cameras up. Okay, you have our dog, Agape, on the trail. Isn't she cute? Okay, and then we have some bison in Yellowstone. Notice these clips are different lengths, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. You can't hear the audio on the clips, but they all have audio. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to move these over a little bit. Okay, you don't have to be budding right on the edge of the timeline. I don't usually like to do that. So we have this clip here. This is going to be on V1 and A1. Okay, I like this portion of the clip. I'm going to go into Effect Controls up here, uh, which is nested in with the Source Monitor. I'm going to twirl down Motion, and I'm going to change the size of this. I'm going to scale it down to 25. Now, that looks awfully small. Uh, let's try 50%. Okay, so just half of the original size. I like that better. Okay, we can definitely get four of those on the same screen. Let's move these parameters here, the position parameters. The left one is horizontal, the right one is vertical. Okay, you can just click and drag, it becomes two arrows there. And you can get those lined up there along the top edge. You want to be as precise as you can. You can even use the numerical values to be more precise. Now I'm going to bring the next clip over. I'm going to have to drag it. I might have to uh, unlink it over here through the link selection button so I can drag the audio down because I want to keep the audio. I'm going to re uh, click that select button there, the link selection button. Okay, this clip is too short, so I'm going to lengthen it. Okay, it's still kind of short. I want them all to be about the same length, so I could slow this down a little bit. Okay, let me go ahead though, and I'm going to also make that 50. And now remember, you're looking down the stack, so we're seeing the other clip now because one is on top of the other one. I'm going to use the position parameters to bring it up next to the other clip. Okay, you can be real precise. You can even enter it in numerically if you click on it, and it will let you enter it in on the uh, X and Y axis there. Okay, so I see that clip is a little bit short. I'm going to go in here to speed duration. I right mouse clicked that uh, clip. I'm going to first try. I don't know, 70, 77, something like that. It's a little long. Come back into here. I'll try again, 77 this time. Okay, that's about right. I like that. And 77, you don't want to go any less than that if you don't want to look slow motion. It kind of does look slow, slow mode, but that's all right. Not too bad. Okay, so you see the two clips are side by side now and playing. Do they work together? They work pretty well because the ones, the one on the left, we're in close up, and on the right, that's more of a medium shot, and so it's nice and tight. We can see what's going on in the clip. So you need to choose clips that they're pretty, you're pretty tight on your subject. Here we have the dog clip. Let's bring her over. So right now she's full size, but we can make this smaller by going into the parameters here, making it 50, the scale. Okay, remember I twirled down motion to get these things, to get these options, and I'm using the parameters under position to bring her down to the left corner, the left lower corner. Okay, this is way too short of a clip, so I am going to go into speed, and I'm going to make this a lot shorter. Now she's staying pretty still, so I, I think it's okay if we bring this way down. Okay, you want to just experiment with it. And since she's staying pretty still, you probably won't be able to tell that's slow motioned. Okay, so then we have the, the buffalo. All right, and now I'm going to put, need to put this on a different track. You see that? So that, that way I'm not just deleting my old track. So that doesn't delete their existing audio tracks so when I slide this over. Now I'm going to re-link those. Okay, I'm lining it up and you see that snaps in with the ones below. All right, I make sure it's selected and then I also scale that down to 50%. I use the position parameters there to put that in the right lower corner. Okay, I'm going to match it up, and it looks like the um, the one on the upper right corner is down too low a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to have to, to reselect that one up here 
by going down to the timeline, figuring out which one it was. I need to see it on the source monitor, so I went back to that tab. Okay, and there it is. I can go here and then I can adjust those parameters to bring it up slightly because I want that black line there. Now you can leave that black line or you could put some lines on top using the text screen. But before we do that, let's just, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so they're exactly the same length. Audio, I won't be able to do that for the slow motion ones. I could just add some uh, atmosphere soundtrack. But right now we're blasting out to red. If you see that in the audio meters, we won't really get into the audio editing right now of this. Watch this to see. It doesn't look so bad. Okay, it's a, they're strong images. They work well together. Okay, I'm now going to go into a text screen. Okay, so into the title menu. And what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to actually add text. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shape, rectangle, to create a line here. Okay, so I have a nice white line, both vertically, and I'm going to do one horizontally by doing Command C. After, I mean, of course, I want to make sure it's selected. Then Command V to paste. Okay, and then I'm just going to move it to the side. I'm going to rotate it so that's a 90 degree rotation. Okay, and then I'm going to lengthen it so that it fits there between. I want to make sure this is 90 degrees exactly. Okay, so I'm going to type it into rotation and I'm going to bring it across. Now you notice it's not actually appearing on the monitor because you have to drag in just like with the text, any sort of title. Uh, clip, you have to drag it on the timeline on its own video track. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's lined up. Okay, I like that. That cleans it up nicely. It really puts it into its own parameters. Now I'm going to go ahead and dissolve these. You can, of course, do uh, Shift Command D to, for the default audio dissolve, and then sh just Command D for the default transition, video transition, which is a uh, dissolve. So I like that they all dissolve in together, including the title. Remember titles you can also dissolve in and out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now to audio edit this, you really do need to mute each track, mute all the tracks except the one you're working on. It's a good idea to, um, to really keyframe that audio individually. Okay, you would need to keyframe that using command click. Okay, and we'll get that into that at another time. Uh, of course, play with gain first. We can bring that down by doing like minus five, and then you just mute all the other tracks, and then you would. Pr and we can't hear it because I have the audio turned off, and I'm I'm audio recording this separately, this voiceover. But you do command click, command click, command click along that keyframe envelope, the keyframing envelope. And then you can play with it to just bring in the sound now and then, have some audio peaks on each track, and hopefully they're not at exactly the same time, and that makes it more interesting audio-wise. It draws the viewer to that particular square.